spent most of today listening to arguments over Nico Jenkins' IQ. The defense says he's tested too low to allow for an execution, but state experts and even Jenkins himself argue otherwise. But Judge Peter Battalion agreed, uh, agreed with them, throwing out the defense's motion. Federal investigation in pursuit of 18 U.S.C. 241. Convicted killer Nico Jenkins didn't discuss his IQ scores on the way into court today. My substantive due process was violated before I was ever charged. These officers but he made it clear to the judge inside the courtroom he doesn't like the idea of having what one psychologist calls an intellectual disability. Those, those law enforcement agencies need to file those investigations. To At those one point during the psychologist's testimony today, Jenkins said he was confused, saying, quote, I thought this was a death penalty hearing, not a competency hearing. All the while, during testimony, the two judges from Kearney and Madison counties, ready for the death penalty phase, sit in the jury box, listening to the psychologists and to Jenkins' numerous interruptions. The third judge, Peter Battalion, is on the bench overseeing the case. More than three years ago, in August of 2013, Jenkins killed four people within a two-week time period. Jenkins admitted to the killings, but many hearings over the last few years have dealt with Jenkins' mental state. Chief Public Defender Tom Riley said the proceedings should end now. Give him four life sentences, he tells the judge. The parents of one of Jenkins' victims, Andrea Kruger, listened as well to today's testimony, telling me they plan to be here for the rest of the court proceedings. And late this afternoon, some fireworks erupted between Jenkins and his defense lawyer, Chief Public Defender Tom Riley. Uh, Jenkins says he wants to testify on his own behalf, but Riley says that would be like, quote, putting a noose around his own neck because he doesn't know what he's doing. And Riley, Riley said he may even withdraw as his attorney. The death penalty phase will continue tomorrow. We are in that phase with, with uh, Douglas County Attorney Don Klein putting on his case saying there are nine aggravating factors. We'll have more coverage for you tomorrow. Reporting live from the Douglas County Courthouse, Michelle Bandur, KETV, Newswatch 7. All right, Michelle, thank you. Meanwhile, opponents of the state's reinstated death penalty say they are not giving up their fight. In Lincoln, a small group held a, vig a noon vigil in front of the governor's mansion. Longtime death penalty opponent Fran Kay has taken part in these for decades. At least a few of us will probably just keep on doing it because mm -hmm. it, it is one visible way of reminding people that this isn't over. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts was not in Lincoln today. He is on a trade mission in Hong Kong. Council Bluffs police say they do not expect any charges in the crash that killed 11 year old Blake Smith. A van hit the child near East Canesville Boulevard and Benton last Wednesday. He died from his injuries on Saturday. Another crash today sends one person to the hospital with minor injuries. It happened this afternoon near 30th and Fort in Omaha. Investigators say the person driving the Hyundai Sonata turned in front of a pickup with a flatbed trailer. There were three people in the car and the front seat passenger needed a couple of stitches, but no one in either vehicle was seriously hurt. And new details now about how that tow truck driver who apparently fell to his death at an impound lot Sunday morning. According to a police report, security cameras show 47 year old Jeffrey Johnson getting into the bed of his truck, leaning toward the side before he slipped and fell. Now Johnson's family says the uncertainty of how he died makes losing him even more painful. I mean, we can't expect to know everything at once. Um, it hurts because it's the questions that make you wonder. And when it makes you wonder, it just hurts even more. Um, but you just have to be patient. Because at this point, I don't the medics rush Johnson from the lot at 78th and F to the hospital Sunday where he was pronounced dead. Well, we go to Lincoln now where 31 year old Melvin Hughes Williams is in jail tonight after police say he walked down a Lincoln Street Sunday without any clothes on holding a Bible. At one point, police say Hughes Williams even took a swing at one of the officers when he ignored commands. He was booked for assaulting an officer. President-elect Donald Trump is shaping what his White House staff will look like, and one pick is already sparking controversy. Trump named former Breitbart News leader Steve Bannon as his chief strategist. Bannon was Trump's campaign CEO for the last several months. The Anti-Defamation League condemned Bannon's appointment, claiming that he has ties to white nationalists. But Trump's newly named White House Chief of Staff, Reince Priebus, defends him. I find him not to be 
uh, the way that he's being accused. I find him to be the opposite. And I think people need to, to give people time and give people an opportunity and not make judgments. Don't judge people based on what other people say. Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager, says the president-elect will be naming more members of his administration soon. And in the wake of Trump's tough, tough talk about immigration on the campaign trail, the nation's Roman Catholic bishops urged the president-elect to adopt humane policies toward refugees and immigrants. The group made their plea today at the start of a conference in Baltimore, saying they continue to offer aid to people running from conflict and violence around the world. Well, President Obama took questions today from reporters before leaving on his final major trip abroad. KTV News Watch 7 Sally Kidd has the latest from our Washington Bureau. David and Melissa, President Obama provided more details about his private meeting with Donald Trump. He says he told him that in the wake of such a hotly contested election with the nation so divided, what the president-elect says and how he says it really matters. Gestures matter uh, and how he uh, reaches out to groups that may not have supported him, uh, how he uh, signals his interest uh, in their issues or concerns. Uh, I think those are the kinds of th uh, things that can set a tone. The president's last major foreign trip will take him to several countries where he's expected to confront concerns about the future of America's leadership under its next president. Mr. Obama says the president-elect expressed to him a great interest in maintaining strategic relationships between the U.S. and its allies. And that's one message he's going to deliver on this trip. I think that's one of the most important functions I can serve at this stage during this trip uh, is to let them know that uh, there is no weakening of resolve when it comes to America's commitment to maintaining a strong and robust uh, NATO relationship. Now, on whether Mr. Trump has the temperament to be president, Mr. Obama said there are certain elements of Mr. Trump's temperament that will not serve him well unless he recognizes and corrects them, because he says when you're a candidate and you say something inaccurate and controversial, that, of course, has less impact than when you're president. In Washington, Sally Kidd, KETV News Watch 7. U.S. Department of Defense officials confirmed two U.S. soldiers have been killed in Afghanistan. One of the soldiers is from Illinois, the other from California. They died from injuries after a bomb went off in the city of Bagram. Few other details have been released. We have also learned that veteran journalist Gwen Ifill lost her battle with cancer. Ifill was the first woman to co-anchor a nightly newscast. She worked with Judy Woodruff on the PBS NewsHour starting in 2013. PBS's president called her one of America's leading lights in journalism. Eiffel was 61 years old. Back in the metro, a look outside right now. The sun's setting on another warm November day. How long will it last, though? Chief Meteorologist Bill Ramby has the upfront forecast to plan your evening. Hi, Bill. Hi, David. Maybe a little longer than you think. We're not quite done with it yet. Look at that beautiful sunset. That's the view from the Embassy Suites along 10th Street downtown. 56 temperature now. Skies clear to partly cloudy. Sun is officially set. Temperatures around the